How to make your own 16 inch thin crust pizza from scratch. Intro, why mill your own flour? Here's a little bit of insight to home mill flour versus store bought flour and the nutritional value. As you can see, home milled flour is way more nutritious. Hi guys, so today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make a thin crust pizza using home milled fresh homemade flour. You might be wondering, why should I go and make my own flour? Well, when you make your own flour, it has more than seven times plus the nutrition. It's really healthy for you, and the taste is amazing. Once you try your own homemade flour, I don't think you'll ever, ever, ever go back to. I mean, the first time I ever made my first homemade bread from my own flour, I just stopped buying I stopped going to the store, I stopped buying um, flour from the store, I stopped buying bread from the store. It's just, this the taste doesn't even compare, doesn't even come close to how good and delicious it is. You know, before I used to buy like bread and it would sit in the refrigerator sometimes, you'd make a slice of sandwich or whatever, but now the bread doesn't even last a couple of days because everybody's grabbing it. People are eating bread for breakfast, you know, because it's so good. So that's how amazing home milled flour is not just bread but pastry i mean it's just crazy how delicious it is but i mean a lot of people don't understand how flour is actually made flour is made from what's called wheat berries it's grounded or milled into flour and when you go to the store and buy flour they remove all of the nutrition because fresh milled flour goes quick within like two days i mean it starts going bad really fast so in order for them to store it on a shelf, they have to remove most of all of the nutrition because it's the nutritious part of the grain that actually starts to rot. So they have to remove that so that it can just last on the shelf. Even if you're buying organic, all the stuff was taken out of it. So, and all the flavor is also taken out because all of the nutrition holds all of the flavor. So before I get started, I'm also gonna be converting this recipe for you who you know don't have a grain mill and want to make a thin crust pizza and want to try this recipe so i'm going to convert it for you but i urge you urge you to consider milling your own flour because even though i'm sharing this recipe this recipe is going to be a thousand times more better probably a thousand times more better in taste when you mill your own flour it's just so much flavorful it's just crazy flavorful um, I make a loaf of bread and everybody's eating it. It's gone. Um, I used to buy store-bought bread and it would sit in the refrigerator. So it's just absolutely amazing. So delicious. So, and way more nutritious. So anyway, um, let's get started. Ingredients. You will need three fourths cup of warm water 110 to 116 degrees, one tablespoon of agave nectar organic, a half a teaspoon of active dry yeast, one half cup organic hard white wheat berries, this will make three fourths of a cup, one half cup organic durum wheat berries, this will make three fourths of a cup, three tablespoons organic soft white wheat berries, this will make one third of a cup, Non-stick cooking spray and a 16 inch pizza pan. One half teaspoon of fine salt. Two tablespoons of olive oil. Make the pizza dough. In three fourths cup of water, place one tablespoon of organic agave nectar. Then heat for about 30 to 40 seconds to reach about 118 degrees. Let the temperature drop a bit and once the temperature reaches about 115 degrees, go ahead and add your active dry yeast. Give it a quick stir and this is what it looks like when the yeast is activating. You'll see it start to bubble. You're gonna need your 
one half cup organic hard white wheat berries. This will make three fourths cup of flour after you grind it. One half cup of organic durum wheat berries. This will make three fourths of a cup of semolina or durum flour. Three tablespoons organic soft white wheat berries. This will make one third cup of pastry flour. So basically it's going to be an all purpose mix and a durum mix. Now it's time to mill your flour. Just mix all the grains together so that you'll have a nice mix of flour. Set your grain mill to its finest setting and then turn on your grain mill and start milling your grain. This will make approximately two cups of flour total. Now add one half teaspoon of fine salt into your newly made pizza flour. And mix well. The conversion for this store-bought flour sifted would be one cup all-purpose flour, one half cup semolina flour, and one half cup durum flour. Add your yeast mix and two tablespoons of olive oil into your mixing bowl. You can do this without a mixer. It's very easy to do without a mixer. But I'm using one here. Add your two cups of fresh made pizza flour. Mix well. Now you're going to cover your dough and let it rest for about two hours. Two hours later, it's time for you to flour your surface and roll out your dough. Go ahead and knead it, roll it, punch it, do whatever you need to do to get it flat and nice consistency. A good way to do is get your fingers in there and start pushing it down, flatter and flatter and flatter as it gets wider and wider. You can toss it around a little bit. The durum flour will give it that elasticity so that you can stretch your dough. This is what makes pizza. Always flour it so it's not sticky. Then you're going to be adding it to your pizza pan. I pre-greased mine with a non-stick spray. I used a non-stick olive oil spray. Now flatten the pizza into the pan. You'll see that it's nice and stretchy because of the derm and the semolina flour. Now add your favorite toppings. I'm doing a veggie herb one. My choices are spinach, olives, peppers, sun-dried tomatoes, fresh grated cheese, mushrooms, chicken, and Italian seasoning. A good tip is if you want a crispy pizza, you can put the pizza in without putting any toppings on for about five minutes. Then take it out and add your toppings. I'm just adding my toppings and gonna go ahead and pop it in the oven. But I might wanna try a crispier pizza dough next time.
preheat your oven to 425 degrees and bake for 14 to 17 minutes. I hope you enjoyed my recipe as much as we did. Please like and subscribe to my channel. This recipe was created by me at Girly Hobbies.